ants simply stand there and spread their leaves. That's all it takes for them to absorb CO2. They use the CO2 to grow food for humans, such as rice. This happens naturally, but it can't be done artificially. Capturing CO2 from the atmosphere was unimaginable and it was believed to be impossible. This technologically is difficult to achieve, but it's interesting to try and mimic nature. How were such sophisticated functions achieved? That's really interesting from a scientific perspective, separate from research into practical application. Cell membranes are extremely thin, but they have selective permeability, which is an interesting function. The fact is, they're thin, and the issue is to make use of this function to capture CO2. I've been engaging in R&D on artificially making something similar to the cell membrane. But cell membranes are adapted to the cells they enclose. So instead of copying them, it's important to extract their essential functions. I wasn't the first person to make a gas separating membrane. It's already been done before. It has extreme selective permeability, so it has limited capacity. Capturing CO2 from the atmosphere would require the membrane to have a huge surface area. The amount of CO2 that could be captured was the issue. But we made the membrane as thin as possible to try and dramatically boost this amount. We began our research based on the belief that this could be achieved with a membrane of practical size. Our research is unique in that we target atmospheric CO2. Filtering the low density atmosphere to concentrate CO2 is extremely difficult. It's one of our huge challenges in the Moonshot project. Passing air through the separation nanomembrane captures CO2, as well as a minute quantity of other gases, particularly oxygen. We react the captured CO2 with hydrogen to convert it. But hydrogen reacts more with oxygen than CO2. Oxygen normally reacts with hydrogen to form water. So making it react with CO2 is quite difficult. Anyone with scientific knowledge knows that making hydrogen react with CO2 in the presence of oxygen would seem almost impossible. In other words, it hasn't been done by anyone so far. Our system is different from the direct air capture and utilization systems being developed in the US and Europe. The key concepts behind our development are compact, dispersed, and scalable. When considering the lack of space in Japan, it is difficult to set up numerous large-scale systems. It's important for them to be compact and dispersed, allowing the setting up of systems in required sizes and locations. This is based on the concept of local production for local consumption of carbon resources. That's what makes our system unique. We will capture CO2 and convert it into a carbon resource, realizing local production for local consumption, while also solving the issues of global warming and energy.